In today's video, we will try to demystify the whole concept of autofocus system and look at the advantages and disadvantages of the various autofocus system which is available in our cameras. Hi, welcome to technology. Time and again we come across situation wherein the cameras are judged based on their autofocus abilities and same is the case with mobile phone cameras. So in today's episode we'll look at the various type of autofocus systems that are available in the market and also the advantages and disadvantages of them. To begin with there are two primary kinds of autofocus system the active and the passive. The active autofocus system is one wherein the distance between the camera and the subject is computed and based on that the amount of lens drive that is required to get an accurate focus is determined. There are various ways of computing this distance between the camera and the subject. A couple of ones which were used in the past were like something like a ultrasound signals were passed from the camera pointed towards the subject and the time that is taken for the sound signals to return back to the camera was used to compute the distance between the camera and the subject. This was then used to do the lens drive to get the autofocus. But as you know this, the sound waves that is reflected from the subject need not actually be from the subject. It can be something from in front of the subject or behind the subject. So this method did not click really well and that's when the laser autofocus system came into picture. A laser autofocus system is one wherein laser beams, a thin beam of laser light is pointed out and shot at a subject and the time that is taken for the laser beam to re reflect back onto the camera is used to compute the distance. This laser based autofocus system is something which is now widely used in mobile phone cameras. Cameras like the LG G3, G4 or even the latest Moto G4 Plus uses what is known as laser based autofocus system. Laser based water of course system is pretty fast and is something which is most looked forward to but the main disadvantage of the laser based autofocus system is that if you are using the camera to shoot something which is across a glass pane or something inside the water that's when the laser diffraction comes into picture and your autofocus accuracy goes for a toss. These were a couple of means in which the active autofocus systems were working. There were even cameras in past which used laser based autofocus system but I don't know why they didn't continue with using laser based autofocus system in the current generation digital cameras. Now let's move over to the passive autofocus system. Passive autofocus system is one wherein you use the image which is captured on the sensor or which is projected onto the sensor to do the autofocusing. In passive autofocus system we have two subtypes which is contrast based and the face detect autofocus. First let's look into contrast based autofocus system. Contrast based autofocus system is one wherein the pixels in the sensor compute the light intensity falling on it and it then, then on calculates the amount of the light intensity differences corresponding to its adjacent pixels and uses this to drive the autofocus motors inside your camera. This is a type of autofocus system which is found in most of the DSLR cameras. Though this is not actually very fast, this is something which is very commonly seen in all type of cameras including the mobile phone cameras apart from the ones which I mentioned which have laser autofocus. Now if you want to have a look at the issues or the drawbacks of the contrast based autofocus system, the time is what is a major concern because the time it takes to autofocus in the contrast based autofocus system is pretty slow because a lot of computation is happening and this is also seen in a lot of images especially when you are clicking the camera, the breathing that happens when you are focusing, this is basically because of the contrast based autofocus system. So this was one of the biggest drawback which is the speed in the contrast based autofocus system. One of the biggest disadvantage with the contrast based autofocus system is that when the contrast is very low especially when you're shooting in misty or foggy condition the camera used to struggle a lot to achieve the focus and also when you're looking at something like shooting sky or clouds or something which has a uniform color with very low contrast that's when the camera was struggling to focus. Now let's have a look at face detect autofocus system. Face detect autofocus system is one wherein there are face detect autofocus sensors or photodiodes which are scattered around in the sensor and this is basically used to compute the focusing of the image. So when I say the uh, photodiodes or the face detect autofocus sensors these are basically based on the type of camera that you are using. An entry level camera might have one or two autofocus uh, sensors especially the face detect autofocus sensor and the higher end cameras will have more number of uh, face detect autofocus sensor. Each of these photodiodes reads the light intensity falling on them and computes the difference based on the amount of blur which is found between these two photodiodes and this is then used to later on drive the autofocus motor. 
So this was pretty fast when compared to the contrast based autofocus system. And this is something which people started to deploy in most of the cameras, including the mirrorless cameras. The camera manufacturer took both this concept to next level wherein they introduced something known as hybrid autofocus system. Hybrid autofocus is something wherein you deploy the advantages of both the contrast based autofocus system as well as the phase detect autofocus system and you merge both of them to get what is known as hybrid autofocus system. Few years back, Canon took the uh, autofocus game to the next level by introducing what is known as dual pixel CMOS autofocus. This is basically what you can call as a version 2 of phase detect autofocus. So what Canon basically did here is corresponding to each of the pixel, they placed two photodiodes to measure the light intensity independently. So we had photodiodes placed across the sensor. Uh, when I say across the sensor, it need not be 100%. Most of the cameras have about 80% of the sensor covered with these photodiodes. So what basically happens is each of these pixels and the corresponding two photodiodes measure the light intensity and compute the differences, which is basically a blur, which, which comes out of the difference, is used to drive the autofocus motor. This being a real time, it was considered to be very fast and you can see it implemented in most of the current generation Canon cameras like the 70D, 80D or even the cinema cameras like the C100. The biggest advantage of the dual pixel autofocus is that this can be implemented in both the photo and the video mode, especially in the movie mode, the AI servo mode, the dual pixel autofocus comes into the picture and it, it makes sure that the focus tracking is really fast and very accurate. This exact same technology was first time used by Samsung in a mobile phone, which is Samsung S7. So the Samsung S7 comes with dual pixel autofocus embedded into the sensor in a mobile phone. And uh, you can see some of the examples here. The autofocus capability of this camera is really fast compared to some of its competitors. If you want to really nitpick on the disadvantages of the phase detect or the dual pixel autofocus system, one thing is the availability of light. In a very low light, the autofocus ability irrespective of phase detect or the dual pixel autofocus really struggles because there isn't much of a light intensity to measure the difference and this is where the dual pixel autofocus struggles a little bit. So there you have it. These are the two different kinds of autofocus which is active and passive and under the passive mode you also learnt about the contrast based and the phase detect autofocus system and the current generation which is the dual pixel autofocus system. Hope you like what you just learned and if you did please make sure that you like the video, share it with your friends and most importantly subscribe to the channel. And as most of you might have noticed by now all the photo and the tech related videos have now been shifted into this new channel which is called technology and I'm keeping it separate from my main channel which is related to travel and nature related video content. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also most importantly click on the notification bell because it will make sure that you get to be notified first when I upload any new videos every week. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.